Hi guys and girls, this is uh, Rahul Prasal with another video on real world AWS cloud architecture and migration. I see a lot of people doing AWS certification and making a switch towards uh, career in cloud, but I didn't see a lot of videos which talk about the real world AWS cloud architecture and migration. So I thought I'll share my experience um, with the application that we migrated called FileShare. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly discuss what is file share and what are the common on-prem uh, file share architecture. Then what were the key requirements uh, for this file share to be migrated to AWS cloud. Uh, we'll quickly discuss step-by-step -step approach for designing the file share on AWS using well-architected framework. And then finally, what were the key migration challenges? Uh, so a lot of you might have been using uh, file share it's basically basically an application uh, where you can uh, share content with your fellow team members in a secured fashion so uh, what you do is you typically pick up a drive with on your laptop and then have a file share mounted it uh, onto that particular drive so this is what it will look like uh, on your device so you probably have say um, a wide drive which would map to this file share and then where you can create content post content then your team members can access that in a secure fashion so what does the typical architecture look like so you, you can see here you have the uh, user with his laptop he can access uh, either read or write the files to this uh, particular file share which is mounted on his uh, uh, laptop uh, Every time he's trying to access the application, he will be authentic authenticated using the on-prem Active Directory. And this file share will be hosted on a uh, Windows server. Uh, so typically you will have two nodes, node one and node two uh, as two different servers, uh, providing the uh, failure ca capabilities. Every time the node one fails, it automatically ships over to node two. Okay. So now what were the key requirements uh, for this file share? So it had about uh, 100 TB of data uh, where it was also required to be highly available. Uh, there was a requirement to have auto scale on the storage side. So once the storage reached, say you had provisioned 100 TB when it, when it reached 80 TB, it should be, be able to automatically scale by 20 to 30% then uh, you should have very low latency um, about a couple of seconds from the security perspective we're looking at encryption and rest in transit and file screening capability for malware as well as any any ransomware um, attacks and then uh, from the backup perspective we're looking at daily weekly and monthly uh, full backups retained for seven years uh, the users were also supposed to be authenticated using the Microsoft AD. So these were the key requirements. Then uh, in terms of the how we did a design for this application on AWS, we use the AWS well-architected framework. So it comes with uh, five key pillars as you, as you can see here. So what I want to show is how to pick up the key parameters in each uh, pillar and then look at what are the options in WS and uh, what is the recommended option and what is the rationale behind selecting that particular recommended option. So the first pillar is the performance efficiency. Um, I've already selected uh, very few parameters for each um, pillar and then can be more but I just picked up the most um, important ones. Uh, in the performance efficiency pillar, you have the hosting platform. Uh, so you had two options, either use Windows EC2, like on-prem, you had the Windows virtual machine, you could you could pick the Windows EC2 uh, and then host the file share on, on, the, on the Windows EC2, or you could use the AWS managed services, uh, which is AWS FSx. So what we did was we picked up the FSx because it's a managed service and typically uh, you should either select a managed service serverless to reduce the effort in managing that server. So that was the reason why we picked up 
the uh, we selected uh, AWS FSx. Then in terms of performance and latency, we required a couple of seconds latency. Uh, so we had three options once we selected FSx. So it was FSx only. Then FSx also comes with the FSx gateway, uh, which provides you low, low latency access to uh, frequently used content by uh, having a local cache on your uh, on, on premise. And then we had the option of using either SSD and HDD. So SSD is pretty fast, but it's a little more expensive compared to HDD. Uh, based on our requirements, uh, we believe that we would, inter we would not require FSX gateway because the file size were pretty short, uh, small. So we um, used only FSX and then also SSD. In terms of the second pillar, which was the reliability, as we saw in the requirements, it was supposed to be highly available and FSX comes in two versions, the multi-AZ and the single AZ. And we were trying to um, uh, prevent, you know, any, any if there was an any AZ failure, since we were trying to have it highly available, we selected the multi-AZ, uh, though it costs almost twice as much as uh, the single AZ FSX. Uh, in terms of the backups, uh, most organization enterprises use uh, standard AWS backup and you configure some rules for daily monthly weekly and then you should be good with a backup but um, since we had about 100 tb of data uh, that was proved to be very expensive so we built a custom solution using lambda data sync at glacier I'll, I'll talk about that um, a little in uh, later slides uh, but uh, this is a custom solution that we built to reduce the over cost of the backup then uh, looking at the third pillar uh, which is operation excellence the key parameter for operation excellence is using infrastructure as code or operations as code so we had the option of creating the stack either through uh, the console or the cli but we use the cloud formation um, as, as a best practice then uh, in terms of the monitoring and failover mitigation we basically used uh, cloudwatch metrics uh, the free storage capacity iops and a throughput so every time uh, the metrics that we had set, if the metrics were breached, then it will generate a CloudWatch alarm and send a notification to the admin. One thing I wanted to highlight here was there was a requirement to auto scale the storage. So what we did was um, suppose we had free, we had the provision capacity at 100, 100 TB. Once we reached the free uh, storage capacity, uh, where say it was already 80, 80 TB and 20 uh, TB was left as the free storage. What it will do is it would trigger an alarm and that alarm would send an SNS notification to the admin but at the same time it will also trigger a lambda function uh, which would call the FSX API to increase the storage by 20%. So that is another capability we enabled for the FSX. Now, in terms of the fourth pillar on the security side, what uh, one of the key requirements was to enable data at rest and transit. So we used KMS for that. Uh, since we also launched the entire stack using the cloud formation template, and there was a requirement to do the FSX domain join to the Microsoft AD, uh, we required a username password, which was uh, kept in the secrets manager. So that's another service that we used uh, for FSX. Then uh, there is also a requirement to do a file screen to prevent malware attacks or ransomware attacks. Uh, FSX provides you two options. Uh, one is FSX on tap, and then we also built a custom solution around that. FSX on tap is pretty expensive, so we built a custom solution using the CloudWatch logs, SNS, um, and a Lambda function. I'll talk about that. Um, in, in the following slide. Um, then finally for data transfer, we had the option of using either data sync or Robocopy snow cone. Uh, so we picked up an AWS native solution. Robocop is a third party solution. Uh, we could also use snow cone, uh, but the content in the file share was continuously changing. So right up to the cutover, we had to constantly update uh, the changes that were happening in the file share. So that's why we preferred using the data sync. 
Finally, in terms of pricing, uh, we try to keep the pricing low uh, by using a couple of custom solutions uh, for FSX uh, file screening instead of the FSX on tap and then also put a custom solution for the backup. Okay, so how did the AWS uh, architecture look for this file share? So you can you see here the user is accessing the file share from the data center and then we have the direct connect. Um, this direct connect connects to the tran transit gateway which is in the network account which is like a typical architecture um, and then you have the transit gateway attachment in this particular VPC. Uh, so, so the user would uh, connect through this direct connect a uh, transit gateway and then access this uh, file share at um, FSX which is in a multi -A AZ uh, to prevent from any AZ failure. Then uh, I, I spoke about you know protecting against the uh, malware or a, a ransomware attack where uh, particular uh, user put in put in the files certain file types of extension time which are prohibited so if, what fsx does is it provides you the uh, file access audit logs uh, that provide details around the ip um, the username and the file types that have been uh, put by the user in the file share so what you can do is you can access those logs and uh, if there is a match between the file names which have been marked as prohibited it will trigger the lambda function and that lambda function can extract the ip and make a call uh, to the subnet NACL which would then block the access uh, to the user it will also send a notification uh, to the admin and the security team so that that's what a typical architecture look like based on the well architected framework Finally, uh, I'd like, like to talk about the key challenges solution. So I already spoke a little bit about how we prevented the ransomware and malware attacks. In terms of the backup, the backup solution that we looked at was we used the event bridge, uh, which would uh, use a cron schedule at the end of the month and trigger a Lambda function. That Lambda function would start a data sync job, which would take the all the contents within this FSX and um, push uh, all the content in the file share to the glacier and then finally the last challenge that we faced was in terms of using the data sync so what data sync does is that for each task that you create uh, four IPs would be uh, consumed so that means within uh, file share, if you have 10 folders, that means you're consuming about 40 IP. So that that was a little bit of challenge. You need to think about the size of uh, your site block for the subnet. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, guys, I just want to share my uh, experience on the file share side. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.